Hi, Marco Di Stefano here. I'm doing this video which has been requested by a lot of people interested in flow with uh, coming to me with the question, okay, but how do I add my own library to flow? The case I'm showing you today is about uh, the uh, Spitfire Studio Brass, which uh, actually is a new library and I did not yet implement it in flow. So we are going to do that together. So first things to do is to work on the Vienna template. So here, the first things to do is to identify where are we going to add this library. So here, as you can see, there is already an instance which is called Brass. And uh, this Brass instance uh, can still can ha have still some room to take new instruments. So probably the best choice, it will be to add it here. So let's start. Okay, so here we are going now to add a new contact instance. So I'm using contacts six in this case, and we are going to load Spitfire Studio Brass. Let's start with the first one being horn solo one. So loading. All right, now that the instrument has been loaded, you need to analyze all the channels that you have already used inside this instance and actually take just the next one. To do that, it's very easy if you go in the automation mapping. So here you can see that from one to 16, they are all taken and from two to 16, they are all taken. So probably this is going to be three, one. Continuing from here to 16, three, one. So we are going to put here the name STB is uh, actually the acronym that I'm giving in Flow, Studio Brass. And I'm going to write so STB Horn Solo 1. Okay, now that is done, so you can see that here you have, we loaded the, the instrument, the main instrument with all the articulation. But actually you will see that when you load such kind of instrument, you do not have all really all the articulations that uh, you you can have so in that case what i always do is the following you go in advanced and here you can find the core techniques and the decorative techniques so just remove this one and load this one first and then this one so now we are sure that we have all the articulations which we need. So then next we are going to put all of them to the same MIDI channel. In that case, it just added on the two, but I'm going to put on one. All of them should be on the same output there. That's okay. And another very important thing that you need to do because we are going to create expression maps, which relies on the UACC. So go there and click on lock to UACC one and two. So here you can see you have an idea of all the articulations which are available for this instrument. Sometimes there are some also that which are available on the legato. So let's give it a look. Voila, here it is. So let's load also this one. And here we go. And we put it also to one. And here also we put it to lock to UACC. So actually what we have created here is that we have now one single in, uh, MIDI channel within the instance brass on the port 3, 1, where you have all the articulations of the horns solo one. Uh, to finish what you have to do in uh, Vienna, now you just have to add the automation which will allow to enable and disable that. So you just do add and then you say which one is the three channel one and then you choose always the controller under 25 because this is the MIDI CC which Limor sends when you push on the green or red button. So then you say three one and what do you want to do? Yes, here you can see the name is not yet updated, but you see 40 is the same of your 40. It will be updated in a while. And then you say disable. Okay, so now sending messages, like if you send 
a CC under 25 with a value of zero on exactly this channel, Vienna will enable this one. If you send one with the value one, Vienna will disable. The last thing to do on Vienna is setting the output. So as you can see here, every instrument has its own output and we have already using output till 35, 36. So here I want also to add one, which is the 37, 38. You can keep on adding uh, output like that, but it's important for you to know that the more audio output you have, the more resources it will take. So once you have done this, you have finished uh, working with, with Vienna. Now you just have to save. And here we go to Incubase. So now I'm tweaking the project using the visibility buttons that you have in Lemur. So I can hide all and then I can, for example, showing only the brass here. Uh, and then, OK, we have a horn. So unfold all. Where do we put the horn? We put it there in the brass high. So let me hide all and just show the brass high. So now we want to create a new, uh, we need to create a new instance, a new track in Cubase, which is linked to uh, the instance of Brass in Vienna. Do you remember? It is there. And how do we do that? So first of all, the better, the best things you can do is that always duplicate one existing track, because this means that it will take already all the MIDI sense information, which is already set up, and it will be much easier to edit it instead of retyping it again. So you do. Uh, duplicate tracks okay now you have your solo instrument which has been created here uh, what you have to do now of course first of all let's start by the here the inspector and let's assign the right one so here we have that it was related to the brass 3 and the MIDI signal and the MIDI channel one now it's connected to the right one so it means that i can start to play with it you see and here you have sound but you still don't hear any sound in cubase why because the output the 37 30 out is not enabled so now you go in the output and you say 37 38 enable here it is And you can see that now it appears somewhere in the mixer. Here it is. So that was STB horn solo one. So what I have done in flow is that for each specific library, I have a group and then I, all the instruments are sent to the group of the library where there is some reverb applied, which then uh, sends the, uh, the signal to uh, section groups like you can see here brass strings mix etc so in that case since it's a new library i'm going to add a new group and it's a group name and i'm going to call it as tb okay add here it is it just put it at the end um so STB should have a stereo out which goes into brass and our instrument here should go to STB. Voila. So now you have your instrument which is uh, going to the group of the library and the library of course which is going in the brass group of the section which is here. Uh, then of course you need to have the reverb also in this one and another thing is just to be ready we need to put it in the right order because this shouldn't be at the end but should, let's put it maybe close to sts which is the spitfire studio strings voila there so now if you see look at the mixer again you have your instrument which is pushing data to the group STB, where we are going to put all the instruments of this library. STB is somewhere here. 
here and it has the reverb and then it pushes audio to the brass and here it is brass moves audio to the all where there is still a very uh, little reverb okay this is very optional if you don't want to use it so the next things that we need to do is to set the expression map and to set up the right midi sense uh, let's start with the midi sense because it's easier uh, what is the why would we have a midi sense actually in uh, flow every track has a single midi send which is sent through a specific uh, midi channel and midi value which identify the instruments and this identification is then used in limur to know which instrument is at that moment connected so now what we need to do is that as to look at for how many instruments will be into uh, uh, studio brass so let's look how many we have so one so there are 17 instruments that we need. So it means that in flow, we need to, uh, to allocate 17 of them. Let's decide where to put them. It's all in the about. So here you have the I, which stays for instruments. And you can see each channel can take up to 127 instruments. So you can see that, of course, the first channels already saturated completely used so we can go off maybe the channel 6 do we have 17 allocation yes of course we have and so let's suppose that from now on we are going to use the channel 6 as you can see here starting from the midi value 39 to store this in this in this instrument so now it means that in cubase i go there I set this to 6, like we said, channel 6. And I go there and I go and I set this other number to 39. So now the channel 6, value 39, identifies uniquely my studio brass horn solo 1. All right. OK, to continue, now because this is a, a new library we will need to to declare the the library library so here always in the about you have this sl which means to sound library and here we are going to create we are going to select this one and create a new variable which we call stb with the unique code of the library so just be careful that names here should be unique so we already had sts pro but actually yes it's true i i just just remembering that this is the pro version so i'm going to put stb pro because there is also the non-professional version and here what we are going to do it's very simple whenever you declare a new library into the sound sound library folder you just have to follow it's a kind of object oriented modeling so the first things you have to do is to declare the name so typically it's the same like that and the description which is studio uh, speed file speed file studio brass pro all right and then there are other two things that you need to set. Actually, whenever you have a library, uh, you need to define the, uh, the, the different controls that you have uh, here. So you can see that you have the dynamics, vibrato, release, tightness, reverb, expression. There are some which are always commonly the same and some which are more specific. So what you do is that here at the level of the library, you create a new variable which is called stb pro underscore cc that stays for control change and here inside what you do is that you start to add all the various uh, midi chan midi change that you want to control so there are and if you look at the other libraries how they are done so uh, these are located inside this other folder 
which is called C. You can see that you have all of them. There are some which are already grouping the most essential one, like for example this one, C C dot C C basic. This is uh, like the C uh, the one and the eleven, which are always there. So having done that, it means that you have already assigned uh, in uh, in Limur that when you select this specific instrument in the VST faders, you have at least these two CC. And then uh, you want to add, of course, others uh, to do that. Let's do some of them. For example, now you have the vibrato. Look at this. Vibrato is 21. OK, so typically if now you go in the bank, which is called C, you have something which is on 21 vibrato. Here it is. C C twenty one underscore vib, and so here you go and you say, now the next one will be C dot C dot C C twenty one underscore vib. Voila, and this is adding the vibrato to the list of uh, faders that you will see in the VST faders and microphones uh, tab when you select the instrument and so you can go on like that and add all of them I'm not going to do this just give you an example but then you can add the release so just be careful that uh, most of these they are already coded in uh, in flow so you typically if now if you need a release on 17 and if you go there you typically already have it 17 release this is it and now if we want to look a bit into detail that is always a kind of object oriented modeling so the cc uh, 17 uh, release is has three parameters the first one is the number of the midi change the second one is the text that will be shown in the fader and 0 0.5 is the default value going from 0 to 1 so it means that when you select the fader it will automatically by default be put to 0 0.5 The same thing that we did with the uh, control change, you have to do it with the quick controls because each instrument has quick controls which are already predefined. So in most of the cases for the quick controls, you will always use exactly the same. And in that specific case, I'm, th I'm going to take exactly the same of the studio strings. which is here this one so I'm going to create a variable call it scb underscore qc and put the value so now what I've done ah well mistake stb pro voila so now what we have is that we have defined the first variable declaring that there is a new library that has to be managed in flow which has this code which has this description uh, this variable has all these faders that will be shown when you go in the vst faders and microphones tab in limur and this uh, library has all these faders which will be assigned as quick controls when you select that object in that case like i told you i've taken so you can see uh, close 1, close 2, T1, T2 and typically this will be 22, 23 and 24 so the quick controls in Cubase are organized so to have all always the same one so CC1, CC11, 21 uh, the pan which is 6, the volume which is 10 and then 22, 23, 24 so that for example if at a certain moment you want to use your remote controller and not anymore Limur you will know that you, these eight faders will always trigger the same thing. But then still, here you can decide what it's assigned to the different fader in Limur. Okay, so once we have done this, now we are ready to declare the instrument in Limur. So how do we do that? So we decided to add the instrument in the channel 6. And if you look, you can see from here. 
can see that it was assigned to the channel 6 and that it was on the value 39 so it means that now if we go in Limur and we open the channel 6 and we go to 39 we can now create our new instrument just by adding a new variable which is 39 what do we have to put there? again like an object oriented model so here the first things you have to do is to declare the name of the library and that in that case you find it inside sl.stbpro you remember we call it like that and the second thing you have to put into this array is the name of the instrument so in that case it will be uh, horn solo one all right and if you do not want to change any control change or any quick control then if you are fine with what you have declared on the library you don't have to do anything but for example if you have a specific instrument for which you want that the vst fader will be different than the one of the whole library then you can still do that here because you can go there and say 39 and then you put cc and in that case what it will do is that it will override the value that you have defined on the library and it will take this one to control to show the control change and the same you can do with the uh, with the quick controls so let's look at some where this is done for example here you can see here you have a cc because it's different uh, typically for the quick controls it's always the same so you don't find an example for that so let's remove this one because we don't need it at this stage to recap what we have done we have already uh, Vienna with our instrument we have Cubase with our track connected to Limur because this is uh, only this is all the connection to Limur and connected to Vienna uh, because this is the connection to Vienna and the main part which remains to do on Cubase is the expression map okay so how do we work with expression map in flow um, let's start by looking at which expression map do we have there and so let's do a couple of them i'm not going to do all of them in this video so if i click there i see that the first expression map that i have is long and the second one is long stop it con sordino all right so what we are going to do is on this instrument declare a new variable which is related to 39 and call it ac which means articulation change this library is going to hold the list of all the articulation in the exact same sequence as you, as you will have them later on in the expression mapping cubase which in flow it also corresponds to the exact same sequence as you can as you see them in uh, in contact so the first one it will be the long i'm going to add there so how do we add articulations articulations you find them all inside the folder which is called a the abbreviation and here you have all of them of course depending on the version of flow that you took you might have you will have only the articulations related to your uh, uh, your library so probably you will not have all of them but then as you can see the l is the long so what you do is that we go there and we say all right so the first one is the long here we go and then we had the second one which was long stop it con sordino so let's go find it typically you they are always ordered so you find it with the l wait let's see if you have that already long okay so you see that you have the long stop it but you do not have the long stop it con sordino so in that case we are going to create it so l stop cs we create a new articulation that will come there and the only thing we need to write inside is the text that will appear then in Limur. so long stop 
become Sardino. So now we have declared this new variable l stop cs and we are going to put it in our instrument there. So a long stop cs. So now what we have done is that we, as we have assigned two articulations uh, to uh, this instrument. Save. And to make all this work, we need the last thing to do, which is setting up the expression map. So we go in the expression map setup and we create a new one specific for here. And we call it STP horn sol. So the good news for uh, the Spitfire St Studio Brass is the articulations, they are always almost the same. So probably I'm going to create one and then always use the same. But in that specific case, so what we are going to do is to create a simple one with only two articulations. And the remote that you see here, one and two, refers exactly to the order that is set here. So the first one is this and the second one is this. So don't mess up with the orders, otherwise things will not match. And now we say, okay, the first one was a long and the other one and add the custom articulation text long. Okay, uh, just long. It's on that direction. It's a controller change on the 32 and the value here, you find it there, it's one. It's UACC, so if you know UACC, you know that it's going to be always the same for the long. And the second one, it was stopped con Sardino. Stop con Sardino direction. We add here and we say it's a controller on the thir bank 32 and the value is 7. So we are going to add seven here. And this way, actually what we have done is that we have created the expression map where we have two articulations being the first one, the long, and the second one, the long stopped. And as you can see, when we switch to the articulation one, the value one is sent to contact. And when we switch to the articulation two, the value seven is sent. On the, ba on the bank 32, that is where actually the UACC is listening to control for, for control changes. So now we close and we just apply this one. Here it is. Okay, so you can see that we have two. So now you don't see. Uh, voilà. So now you don't see what I'm doing with Limor, but you can see clearly that now I'm just pressing and you can see that this is changing. Voilà. And then even more, you can see that here is changing. Just be simply, I'm in this moment, you don't see, but I'm clicking on the different articulations which just appeared on my Limur. And then now I'm on the fader part and you can see that I'm moving now the vibrato and all the vibrato moves because we declared the vibrato to be, uh, to be there. And that's all actually. So once you understand the basics, it's very easy to add new instruments. Of course, you have to get used with uh, with Limur and a bit of programming. But as said before, uh, the architecture of Flow is really kind of object-oriented architecture and it's very easy to understand and it's very easy to scale and to implement new things. Uh, one last thing that actually you will uh, have to do is still adding uh, some buttons here. Okay, wait, because, okay. On the visibility one here, because you would like, for example, to uh, not, not in very this one, but probably in the next one by instrument, not even, but, but the one by sound library here, you will want to have a new sound library, which is uh, uh, the Studio Brass. So how to do that? Let's go back to Cubase. In Cubase, you have the studio setup where you have the generic remote where you have all the libraries declared. So look that the la la last one that was used, it was the on the channel two uh, value uh, address 11. 
So we are going to add a new one and we are going to call this toggle stb. Okay. And then we are going to say, okay, it's two and it will be 12. It's right the next one. So what happened now is that he has created a new one here that we need to assign to a specific uh, command and on the process process project logical editor. So how do we do that? So now we go in the project logical editor here and we create a new one. To create a new one, the best things to do is uh, go where you find similar ones. So uh, it, this is by library, so take one, whatever. And then you can see here that what it says is what whatever there is a, a track which has a name that contains s s s in that case it will be s t s and is not empty then it will be toggle the visibility so you just change this you click on the plus button and you create a new one with of course the right name so save ah wait oh yes that was the STB <laughs> plus STB. Okay, now it has been created and saved. So now if we go in the studio, studio setup, we can see and we can now set this one to use the toggle STB, which is there. And then we do, do not forget, that's very important to export and save the file. I'm not doing this now, but you have to do it if you want to persist. And uh, now the only things which remains is to create a new button in Limur. So I'm going to do that very quickly. Just go here, Control C, Control V. So I'm just duplicating the button. And in the button, I'm saying that this is going it. it OK, so what was it? I forgot it. Studio setup. It was 2.12. So here I'm going to say, yes, you will be on channel two, pitch 12. Voila. I'm going to put a name here, which is uh, uh, Spitfire Studio Brass. And that's all. So now I can go in Cubase. OK, I can hide all. And I'm going to show to click that button, which makes appear exactly that one. So click, 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 click. So that's all. So that is uh, the, s the, the process of integrating a library. You have seen it for one specific instrument. Uh, it might require some time, of course, when you want to integrate a full library, but just as a suggestion so far what i've done now it was like one single instrument typically when i do integrate myself uh, libraries especially huge libraries i do it in a different way meaning that first i do all uh, i do all the setup in vienna it means that in vienna i add all the different instruments there since uh, and then i check that everything is there then I add all the automation mapping for all the instruments there. And once Vienna is completely done and finished, I go in Limur and I see uh, where actually which channel I need to use for, for the instruments. And I start to add all the instruments one after the other in Cubase. So as I said before, duplicate tracks so that all the uh, settings that you get there are inherited by default, namely the quick controls and the MIDI sense, and then keep on adding things here. And once you have finished here, uh, then you go in Limur and you start to add uh, the sound library first, and then all the different instruments uh, to the right channel. And finally, you can link the Cubase track with Limur using the MIDI sense here. And uh, the last thing that I usually usually do is the settings of the articulations, which is what sometimes take some time. Uh, but I must admit that I've developed some uh, Java uh, software that helps me doing this.
so because in the end this is a very important trick limur it's a text file and you can navigate through here sometimes it's easier because for example if you are looking for articulations and you want to know if articulation an articulation already exists or not you just go in the text file you do Control F and you say for example long stop it voila and here it is and it's found L stop it's much easier than searching it on the limur itself or I don't know you want to find ricochet voila here it is and you can find directly the name of the variable ric to use for your articulations so limur is a text file and there is a, actually uh, there is a very uh, there are some advantages especially because as I said, I've developed some Java applications which actually uh, tweak the text file and saves me a lot of time because I don't need to go into Limor. And the good news for you is that soon I'm going also to release this app. Uh, so it will be part of Flow. So be in touch. Okay, that's all. So now you have an idea of what does it mean to add uh, libraries on your own in Flow. And uh, I hope that you enjoy uh, your version of Flow. And uh, I'm looking forward to see what you can do with that. Don't hesitate to call me if you have any issue or any question. So thank you for watching. Bye bye.